Welcome to the StriveScan College Launchpad. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but will be around the entire session to answer questions. My name is Anna and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on our website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com launch. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. Take it away. Awesome. I'm gonna share my screen really quick. So I am gonna go through these pretty fast, um, but my name is Holly Oxford. Um, I am from New Mexico Tech. Uh, so kind of going through, we have, we're a pretty small university, um, just kind of relating to these small colleges. Uh, we have around 1300 undergrad students. Uh, our class sizes are about 25. Uh, for our average, our largest are our freshman courses. Uh, and then about 12 students in our lab. We do have that 12 to one student to faculty ratio. So that kind of does help with that one-on-one -on -one attention you do receive um, from our professors. Uh, we have our College of Engineering. So this lists all of our engineering degrees. Any of the ones with an asterisk next to it are part of a five-year plan if you're interested. It allows you to receive your undergrad and your graduate degree in five years, uh, kind of cuts a year off of your graduate. Uh, so this kind of just lists a bunch of our different uh, engineering degrees that we have. And then kind of moving into our arts and sciences as well. Um, so this is our environmental science, uh, our, we have a technical communications, a psychology degree, uh, as well as our biomedical science as well. Um, and so there's some that have that asterisk next to it to kind of add um, to that for that five-year plan option. Uh, this is our admissions requirements. So for the fall of 2022, we did go test optional, uh, but we do require a minimum GPA of a 2.5 and then an ACT of a 21 or an SAT of a 1070 or higher. Um, so that is for our first time freshmen. We do have a bunch of student clubs and activities on campus as well. Um, many professional clubs, quite a few club sports, uh, intramural sports, and a lot of just for fun clubs as well. Uh, we do allow our students to be able to start up clubs if they wish we have them uh, so they can get about 15 students uh, to kind of uh, sign a petition that helps them be able to start whatever club they're interested in starting on campus. Um, but we have so many different clubs, um, basically something for everyone at our university. We do have our recreational opportunities as well. Uh, so we do have a gym on campus. We have a golf course that sits behind us. It's an 18 hole a championship golf course. Uh, we have a swimming pool that's open year round and then a lot of different outdoor activities uh, around us as well um, and things that students can rent uh, and be able to kind of go out, go camping, hiking, different things like that. So our students do go a lot of different places. We do offer a lot of internships and a lot of career opportunities. Uh, we do run career fairs in our fall and spring semesters uh, for our students. About 85% of our students do have jobs before they graduate. Uh, and then six months after graduation, that percentage goes up to around 95% of our students do have a job or graduate school lined up. Uh, and that job is kind of in their specific um, field of study. We do have housing. Uh, in housing, we have free laundry and free parking. Uh, our campus is able, you're able to walk across it about a 10 minute walk from one side of campus to the other. Uh, we have traditional style um, housing. We have suite styles and apartment styles. Uh, so there's different types of housings uh, for you students to be able to pick from. And they're all located on campus minus, I think we have about two off campus um, apartment style housing. Uh, so this kind of shows our cost of attendance. So this is gonna be for New Mexico residents, for our non-residents. And for then those who um, participate possibly in the WUI, which would be the 150% um, tuition discount. So that kind of breaks down uh, those amounts. We do offer scholarships. So when students fill out applications, they do uh, double as your scholarship application as well. 
Uh, so you're able, we go off of your high school GPA and when we're requiring testing, we go off of that as well. Uh, we do have New Mexico resident scholarships uh, that kind of help our New Mexico residents, but we also have non-residents as well to kind of help out all of our students who are coming into our university. Uh, so you will be able to qualify for those with your FAFSA or when filling out an application. Um, this kind of shows our application checklist. So it kind of walks you through our step-by-step. -step. So you fill out an application and set up a status page. Uh, send us your transcripts and your test scores. We evaluate you. Um, we give you an offer for admission if you meet our requirements. Uh, we offer you scholarships that you can accept as well. And then if you're interested in living on campus, then you can apply for our on-campus housing. We do have a $100 non-refundable deposit when you do accept your admission, uh, but that does go into your student account and kind of help you um, from there kind of uh, pay for tuition or pay for different things, or sometimes you end up getting that back. Um, so this is kind of all I have to share. I know it's kind of a really quick run through, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to me or any of my um, colleagues and we can definitely do our best to answer um, your questions or if there's anything I went over and you kind of have more questions about that, um, then you can definitely uh, reach out to me or send something in the chat and I can definitely um, assist you guys and kind of help you out. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Temple University Japan campus. Hello there, uh, my name is Andrew. I'm an admissions counselor here at Temple University Japan Campus, or TUJ for short, and we give you a very quick introduction into our institution. So Temple University originates in Philadelphia. That's where our main campus is based. Uh, and Temple University is uh, essentially an international branch campus of that school. That means that we teach just as Temple University does in Philadelphia. Our students are working towards a Temple degree, exactly the same as the students are doing again in the US campus. Uh, and we teach entirely in English. So you're essentially getting a temple, an American education here in the heart of Tokyo, Japan. If you're studying for, you know, uh, AP credit, IB, uh, if you're taking A-level uh, examinations as well, you can potentially transfer those over to TJ before you start your undergraduate degree. Now, as mentioned, Temple starts in, in Philadelphia. We obviously have our campus in Tokyo, Japan. There's also a campus in Rome, Italy. So we're a very global outlooking institution. Uh, as a student, you can come and do a full four-year undergraduate degree with us here in uh, the Japan campus, but some of our students spend, uh, choose to spend their time on different campuses. So you may do, for example, a year in Philadelphia, a semester abroad in Rome, but you'll graduate from Japan. Uh, again, it'd be quite flexible where you choose to study uh, at Temple. Now, looking specifically at our Japan location, uh, we are very lucky to be located in the heart of the city of Tokyo, uh, one of the most amazing cities in the world. You're not studying on the outskirts of Tokyo, again, we're right in the city. Places like Shibuya, Shinjuku, Harajuku, which are real hubs of Tokyo. These are the pictures that you see in the media when they describe Tokyo. They're located within 15 minutes of the campus. So we have a great vantage point to go, go out and explore this amazing city. Now, looking specifically at your student experience, where we differ greatly to the main campus is the size. Uh, as you're aware, we have around 1,300 students altogether compared to 35,000 undergraduate students in the Philadelphia campus. So we have a much smaller close-knit community here. Our average class sizes tend to be around 20 students per class, uh, which tends to make the classes very interactive. You'll get to know your fellow classmates and the faculty very, very well. And in addition to your, to your excellent academic education, we're keen on uh, adding a practical experience to your work. So majority of our students will do internships. Here we'll work with the local community, whether it's school visits or cleaning up local parks, for example. And we like to offer that immersive opportunity to get to know Japan and its culture as well. So after classes, uh, we have a variety of different clubs that students will participate in, whether it's sports based, uh, whether it's Japanese cultural based or other, other interests. Uh, and students are welcome to make new clubs as well. And we offer a very extensive activities program, so you're not limited to exploring only Tokyo. But for example, well, for example, we'll go and do skiing trips in Hokkaido. You might go down to Kyushu, experience the onsen down there. Uh, you might go and trek and, and check out Mount Fuji as well. So there's a variety of different uh, opportunities to really immerse yourself in the culture here of Japan. We're a very diverse campus. We have around 65 
to 70 different nationalities each year at the institution. That diversity is also reflected in the faculty. We have faculty from all over the world teaching here, including a number of uh, faculty who will come over from the main campus in Philadelphia every year to teach here at the Japan campus. Now, being a small school, we put our focus into 10 undergraduate majors. They're mainly liberal arts based uh, with majors like international business studies, international affairs, communication studies, art, and of course, Japanese being some of the more popular majors. Uh, you can double major, you can major and minor. Uh, a very popular combination would be something like an international business studies major with a minor in Japanese. Again, all of these majors can be done uh, completely at the Japan campus, a full four year undergraduate degree with us here in Japan. They're taught entirely in English. Uh, we have a special uh, computer science two plus two program that's done with two years in Japan and two years in the Philadelphia campus as well. Uh, now we're the, actually the oldest foreign university campus in Japan. We've been here for 40 years. This year is actually our 40th anniversary, but in 2019, we reached a huge milestone, opening up a brand new campus in Setagayaku uh, for TUJ. So this is a purpose-built facility for, T, uh, for, for uh, TUJ students. Uh, and we're looking forward to see how this space develops and grows as we, as we spend uh, more years in our new campus. Now, one of the big advantages of being a small international branch campus is we can offer a lower tuition rate to our students. Uh, you can see here the, the fees compare very favorably when you're looking at an out-of-state college fee or a private college fee in the US at approximately 15,000 US dollars per year. Uh, you can use your FAFSA in the Japan campus. We do have a number of merit-based scholarships that students can apply for as well. Uh, and many of our students choose to work part-time. Um, we do have a number of jobs on campus, uh, things like English language teaching as well off campus is a very popular op option for students to help subsidize the costs of study. I'm not going to go through the application process in lots of detail, please reach out to us and we can go through this, but it's very similar to um, uh, most college applications now, you'll complete an application form, we'll ask for your transcripts, we are test optional, uh, there is an application fee. Um, it's rolling admissions. Once you've completed your admissions application, we will send you a decision in approximately four weeks. We have a variety of different events going on online. Uh, we have sample lessons, for example, information sessions, uh, admissions 101 uh, webinars. Feel free to check these out um, if you want to get more information and a feeling for our institution. Uh, and if you have any questions, please do reach out to us. We're always happy to help. And I hope I get to uh, speak with you uh, soon in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Juliet, Admissions Outreach Counselor Lead for Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, also known as REMCAD. So I have the privilege to tell you about the specific art and design college with more than half of the student population studying online and 700 students are enrolled in the on campus experience in Denver. REMCAD is the premier art and design college in Colorado and the campus is on the National Registry of Historic Places, which definitely adds to the experience. Established in 1963, our diverse student body was and is founded on something more than academic excellence. Creative minds take root here for the relentless student support, innovation in both teaching and mentoring. As an artist myself, having attended a college with small class sizes, I know firsthand some of the benefits. I passionately believe that art hearts need the freedom to interact when they are ready to engage, when it feels safe to express ourselves. Non-artists can lack the understanding of our soul communications. And you will find the quaint community, community at REMCAD is where many art hearts thrive in one place, gaining confidence, growing into the individual they dreamed of. The amazing professors here are the real artists and designers as well and have time to give you individualized attention. Located in a sweet spot between the scenic Rocky Mountains and within an art district called 40 West, we are east of the bustling downtown where the newly opened Male Wolf is and right behind Casa Bonita, if you're familiar with that landmark. You could choose from a diverse list of chromatic creative disciplines to earn a Bachelor's of Fine Art or a Bachelor's of Art in Music Production. One accrediting body that holds us to a high degree of accountability and standards of excellence is the National Associations of Art and Design or NASAD. 
You will see other accreditations such as the Council of Interior Design Association and Colorado Department of Education are for the two licensure programs. We're big on critical thinking, passion, and stirring up change in the community, the creative realm, and the world. Hands-on instruction in small classes, foundational classes to help you develop all your skill sets. And at REMCAD, you'll be taught by the real artists, designers, and liberal arts professionals who have lived and worked in their respective industries. And you may have already felt it, but when making art, we are learning a range of, of uh, skills to be flexible in thought, developing a dynamic range of competencies. And I love that the dopamine production increases in our brain when making art, which means more happy feelings, yay. So it sounds like healthy coping tools for depression and anxiety. And the small class sizes at REMCAD with a ratio of one teacher to 10 students may also help reduce anxiety. That said, well-being is an ongoing journey and at REMCAD counseling services are available to all students, confidential, personalized and free of charge. And the student accessibility services works towards accommodating all learners equal access and participation. Collectively around the globe, there is an awakening of sorts happening and artists tend to be the truth speakers of our world speaking up first. The integral values of DEI guide REMCAD's academic and institutional development serving a mission, our mission to be to prepare our learners to be forces of change in the industries, communities and the world. So there is a safe place to abandon your fears, greet the bold version of yourself, leverage your talents, make a difference, choose art. We're like a family here. So if you run low, uh, low on food or you might need an art supply, the mine has your back. Online management system provides classrooms right at your fingertips, tech bar for your technology support needs. And at Spectrum, you could find art supplies, branded sweatshirts and software login information. There is an option for student housing at the assembly and it is not required. These industry standard tools you might be familiar with would be included in your tuition. And with career and alumni services, students have, and alumni have access to our exclusive job board, which includes internships, professional development workshops, videos, and career advising, all geared towards assisting the student find the dream of their, the job of their dreams. REMCAD Renew program allows alumni to take classes in their degree at no cost to keep up with the ever-changing changing industry that is the creative industry. Your investment with REMCAD tuition would be about 22K per year, depending on the modality, and some scholarships can be found at remcad.edu. We will consider external scholarships, 529 plans, VA benefits, and financial aid to those who qualify. And REMCAD admissions is rolling. So instead of asking for your standardized test scores, test scores, we ask you curate a collection of your best creations as your portfolio and write an artist statement about your story, your personal story, paired with some of some other logistical requirements, which all starts with the admissions interview. You will make many portfolios throughout your artistic career and a successful REMCAD alumni who works for Adobe Creative Suites in California is featured here quoted on the importance of focusing on the portfolio during college. And this is one grad story out of many. You could find many other alumni success stories who have landed creative positions with companies like Google, ESPN, BMW, DreamWorks, Disney, Pixar, Microsoft, just to name a few. If making a portfolio makes you nervous, go ahead, scan this QR code. I'm running a virtual session tomorrow night. And we do have daily tours and you can also request information by scanning this uh, QR code. There is an info session on June 4th, which you could join us for uh, in person in Colorado. And you may connect with us. Go ahead and take a picture of the screen. I'm running out of time. So if you take a picture of the screen, you'll have our contact info. And with that, I know choosing to be an artist is the brave choice. And you know in your heart if it's the right choice for you. REMCAD would be thrilled to help bring your creativity to life. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Whitworth University. Hi, everybody. I'm Hannah with Whitworth University. I'm going to share my screen really quickly.
All right. Here we are. This is us. We're Whitworth. We're located in Spokane, Washington. So we are on the eastern side of Washington State. Um, we have a beautiful downtown environment with the arts scene, the food scene, all of that stuff. And then we're also close to a lot of mountains and lakes and rivers. So if you enjoy being outside, Whitworth is a really good place to be. All right, this next slide is going to give us um, an overview of our student body. So right now, Whitworth currently enrolls about 2,300 undergraduate students. And we love that number so much because it allows us to maintain an 11 to 1 student faculty ratio. And the reason why we love that ratio so much is because it allows 84% of our class, classes to have fewer than 30 students, meaning that you get to know your professors really, really well. It's pretty standard that you'll know your professor's families, they will know you by name, you will go over to their houses. And so it encourages this really rich community. Um, and I think I'm an alum myself, when I graduated from Whitworth, I think of my, uh, my diploma less as a receipt and more of like a membership card into this really rich network of peer mentors and um, professors and awesome networking opportunities that are going to benefit you for your entire life. 84% of our graduates do finish in four years. We like to get you in and then get you out in four years so you can go on and do your next great thing. Um, speaking of the next great thing, 95% of our graduates do find either employment, they're at a master's level education program, or they are in an internship within six to nine months of graduation. We have over 100 majors and programs, and you can see the list there. Um, if you have any questions about any of them, obviously I don't have time to go into the nitty gritty of each, but feel free to reach out. Um, a couple of highlights I will mention is that um, many of these majors will require students to have an internship in this field um, as part of their graduation requirements. And another part I love about internships at Whitworth is that your professors can help you find them because they know you so well, right? Because our, our classes are so small and our community is so tight knit. Um, they could say, oh, um, you know, Abby's in marketing. Abby might like this internship that I just found. And there's six internship credits for Abby, right? And many of these internships do lead students to careers after they graduate in the same places um, where they had their internships. Um, and then for some of these intern or for some of these majors as well, um, study abroad is required. Like for instance, if you're studying a foreign language, for the rest, you can study abroad and earn credits for any discipline. So over half of our student body studies abroad at least once during their time as a Whitworth student. I got to study abroad once as a foreign exchange student in Southern France and another time I studied away in Washington DC um, for a month interning at the Smithsonian. So we have a lot of opportunities for you to um, discover the world outside of the classroom. Our application is free um, and it is pretty simple. If you are a first year student, you will just need to fill out the Whitworth app or the Common app, and then you'll have to include a high school transcript. Beyond that, there are several components of the application that are optional. You can include them if you'd like to, and those are a writing sample or essay, a test score, or up to three letters of academic recommendation. We love for you to include as many pieces as you can because we like to see who you are holistically when we are evaluating your application, but um, there's no need for you to feel like your application will be harmed if you don't have these. All right, so as soon as you apply, you will receive your financial aid package shortly thereafter. We consistently rank really highly by the US News and World Report as far as best affordability and value goes. You can see that number at the top. We tend to award just under $36,000 in scholarships and grants alone to first year students. And that aid sticks with you all four years. We don't do front loading. You can see here a list of scholarships um, that are just kind of our baseline scholarship package. Again, this does not include, include need-based grants. It doesn't include loans. It doesn't include student employment, anything like that. Um, but this is a baseline package to give you an idea of what you might earn as a student at Whitworth. 
your next steps. If you are a prospective student, meaning you haven't applied yet, be sure to get your free application in when the, the application opens up in the fall. Um, if you are an admitted student, um, as I hope that many of you will be, um, please be sure to file the FAFSA or WASFA as soon as you can in order for us to get uh, your expected family contributions. We can issue your financial aid package. The sooner you submit your enrollment deposit, the sooner you can fill out your housing preferences form telling us where you'd like to live. And finally, you'll sign up for a class registration appointment where one of our faculty members will walk you through, okay, oh, you're interested in international business, you may enjoy these classes and so on. You can see that email address at the bottom, admissions at whitworth.edu, um, as well as the website that'll include some general information about Whitworth. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, pop that in the chat as well, um, but we, we would love to hear from you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Westminster College. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Walter, and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions representing Westminster College in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, so our 32-acre campus is located in the heart of Salt Lake City's eclectic Sugar House neighborhood, uh, which is just about 10 minutes from downtown and just a stone's throw away from a number of national parks. Uh, we have the benefits of being in a larger city, but with trails just 10 minutes from campus and with 10 ski resorts just within an hour's drive. So um, Westminster is a private independent liberal arts college where students benefit from multidisciplinary learning in an atmosphere dedicated to civic engagement. Um, so I want to focus on the liberal arts component. Um, it's what truly sets us apart from all the other institutions in the state of Utah. Um, you're able to explore other interests and broaden your knowledge in areas beyond your major with the liberal arts education. Uh, we also have a total student enrollment of just under 2,000 students with about half of our students being from out of state. Um, and as a private school, we have the same tuition as well as generous scholarships and need-based aid for both in-state and out-of-state students. And Westminster has a close-knit supportive community and is a teaching first institution. So that means that all of our professors are here because they love teaching, they care about students. You'll never be in a giant lecture hall with hundreds of students ever. Uh, with our average class size being about 13 students with no more than 29 or 30 per classroom. So you'll have a closer relationships with uh, your peers as well as your professor. Um, so Westminster has just over 50 undergraduate programs and majors. Um, and just to list off some of our more popular majors, uh, we have nursing, business, performing arts, biology, and outdoor education and leadership. But no matter what you want to pursue, uh, we have a program that's specific to you and your interests, um, including uh, the opportunity to customize your own major. Um, so uh, let me just skip over this slide here. Um, okay, so if you are a first generation college student, we have programs um, that are geared towards you and your success, such as um, the first generation call the First Generation Scholars Program, um, as well as the McNair Scholars Program. Um, and then for students interested in research, Westminster offers incredible undergraduate opportunities um, with about 85% of our students um, participating in an internship or a research project by the time they graduate. Um, so if you have any questions about the rest of the programs that are listed on your screen, our contact information will be listed on the last slide. So feel free to contact us at any time. Okay, so Westminster has a two-year housing requirement for all incoming first-year freshmen. You know, we require this uh, because we would like students to build a community uh, for themselves, to feel a sense of belonging once they're here on campus, and hopefully to just um, gain a little bit of success um, as they're here um, on campus and get acclimated to um, this new chapter in their life, um, as many of them are living on their own for the first time. 
Um, and we also offer the opportunity to become involved in one of over 40 student-led clubs and organizations. Um, these range from those that are more major specific to those that are a little bit more social in nature. Um, and then of course, if there doesn't exist a club or an intramural sport um, that meets your interest and you know other people that would also like to join, you're definitely more than welcome to start your own. So at Westminster, we deeply care about our students' success and well-being. Uh, we offer a wide variety of student support services. Uh, with respect to time, I will not be going over all of these, but if you just want to take a look at this list and you have any questions for me about any of these services, um, again, our contact information will be on the last slide, um, and I'll also provide my own contact information at the very end. So uh, feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have. So there are a number of ways that a student can receive aid at Westminster. Um, first, all of our students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships when you apply. Um, and so this past year, those ranged between $11,000 and $28,000 per year. You don't need a FAFSA for that. That money is automatically yours once you enroll. And then, of course, if you do fill out a FAFSA, that opens you up to even more aid. So things like grants, um, work study, student loans, and um, stuff like that. Okay, so uh, moving on to our application process. We are test optional with a free application and there are two ways to apply. Um, one is directly on our website and the other one is through the Common App. Um, we don't prioritize one over the other, just with a, whichever one is more convenient for you um, is what we'll accept. Um, and uh, just for a basic uh, completed application packet, all we require is the completed online application um, filled out either through our website or the Common App, um, plus a high school transcript, and then either test scores or a personal essay. And then those are some deadlines on the screen there. Uh, on August 1st, the Common App will open. October 1st is when the FAFSA form opens. Um, December 1st is our early action deadline, and then afterwards we're rolling admission um, after the, the February 1st deadline. All right, so thank you for your time. Like I said, here's our contact information, so feel free to reach out to me or any of our other uh, wonderful admissions reps at any time. We're all here to support you, and we look forward to connecting. Thank you. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Pacific University, Oregon. Perfect. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Derek Nagley, and I am one of the associate directors here at Pacific University in Oregon. I can tell you a little bit about today what you'd be finding if you came up here to Oregon to be part of your adventure towards college. And as our name implies, we are a small private liberal arts school. We're located in Portland, just outside of Portland, Oregon. So we're in the upper northwest corner, kind of that true northwest area. 30 minutes from downtown Portland, about an hour drive from the coast, two hours from Mount Hood. So you're able to be skiing and surfing in the same day and being able to live right there on our campus next to Portland, where you're able to connect into places like Nike, Xerox, Intel, and Columbia. So our students are able to have this amazing adventure in the mountains you see behind me, which is the coast range you get to experience out here, while being close enough to everything to be part of your everyday experience while you're at Pacific. And while you're at Pacific, we offer over 75 different majors, minors, and programs. You can see a whole list here, but I know you only have a short amount of time, so you can kind of quickly look through. Know that you'll be able to find all of this information um, on the contacts they give you at the end. But we're best known for things like the pre-health professions, physical therapy, optometry, med school, but also creative writing, education, and business. So as a true liberal arts school, you're going to have an amazing opportunity to try out a lot of different things. And no matter how you apply to Pacific, know that when you come in, you are applying to an honors level education across the board. You don't have to apply with a different application depending on where you're coming from or what sort of program you want to go into, but instead you get to apply to Pacific. And no matter which of those programs you choose, you get a top tier education where with the 1900 undergraduate students we have on campus, your average class size is only 19 students. You're going to know your professors and they're going to know your names. They're going to call on you in class. And at Pacific, every single class is taught by a full professor. There's no TAs or grad students doing any of the teaching. We want you learning from a professor who continues to do work in their field, but who loves to teach and passes that passion on to the students that they're teaching at Pacific. 
And most importantly, we know this is a really big commitment from your end to choose a college. So we give all of our students a four-year graduation guarantee that you are able to make that four-year commitment to Pacific and be able to get that degree. And again, no matter which of those degrees you choose, when you do it, you're going to get that top tier education in the classroom, but we want you to take it out and get real life experience to back that up. So that when you leave at the end of those four years, you're able to leave with the degree in one hand and a full resume in the other. As the top private research university in the Pacific Northwest, our students are able to do research, job shadowing, and internships starting freshman or sophomore year, not having to wait till they're a junior or senior, though every single senior will do a full project that's specific to their major before they graduate. But most of our students are starting much earlier in the process. And what that means again is that they're able to build up that resume so that when they graduate, our students are able to go on and get that job, go on to graduate school, and over 93% of them are doing it within six months of graduation. But the thing that makes Pacific very different is that while you're here getting that education, we don't want you to only focus on one thing. We want you to be able to also do all of those other talents and passions and identities and groups that you have in high school and keep doing that while you're at Pacific. So whether that means joining some of our 70 different clubs and organization, including our Hawaii club that puts on the largest student run luau on the mainland, maybe that means joining in performing arts with music, dance, and theater, where you don't need to major or minor in those programs, but if that's something you're excited about, you get to continue to build that talent while you're at Pacific. Or for those of you with a passion for athletics, we have over 24 varsity, 20 intramural, and 10 club sports, so our students are able to stay active. In fact, our average graduating senior this year was involved in three clubs or sports that had nothing to do with what they were studying, and were able to get that four-year guarantee, so they're able to mix these in. And they get to take what they're learning in the classroom outside as well, and not just in that internship opportunity, but taking those skills they're learning and building on those. Whether they want to do that in the outdoor pursuits office, where you're able to take trips into the Pacific Northwest and learn how to kayak on the ocean, or learn how to rock climb in downtown Portland, you're able to mix in those outdoor opportunities and even get an outdoor leadership degree. Or for those students who want to study abroad, we offer sites around the world for study abroad opportunities, for two-week classes, and for community service-based classes to study not just in Oregon, but inside the U.S., in Hawaii, and around the world as well. So our students are going to be able to build up that excitement and take those skills where they go. And to apply to Pacific, you need to fill out the common application, write the essay that's in there. Ours is completely free, so you're going to be able to do that. You'll send in an official transcript, a recommendation, and Pacific is completely test optional, which means if you want to send in your test scores, that's part of your academic profile, but we will only consider them if they help make your application better. So there's no downside to sending in those test scores. And we use all of this to do a holistic review of your application, and we start awarding merit scholarship from day one. So what that means is based on your academic profile, it doesn't matter where you're coming from or what your parents make, but our students are able to get academic merit scholarships ranging from fifteen dollars to $27,000 per year for all four years, and those are guaranteed scholarships for the full four years you're here. We offer special interest and talent awards in music, dance, and theater, robotics, leadership, outdoor activities, so you can apply for those to keep building those talents and those things you love as part of your education while you're here. And most of those don't even require a major or minor. If you just really like singing, you can audition for music scholarship, be involved in the music program, and be majoring in biology while you're here. And finally, for those of you who are seniors, we invite you to campus next year to come out and earn a $1,000 scholarship while you visit campus, or if it's a little bit too far away, hopping online and doing one of our virtual activities. I'll put my information in the chat as well, but again, my name is Derek, and please feel free to reach out with any questions you might have about Pacific University. Thank you all so much for being on here this evening. Thank you. Lastly, we'll be hearing from Reed College. Hi folks, I hope everyone's having a good evening. My name is Nell Scherfling. I'm an admission counselor here at Reed. I also attended Reed as a student, um, used they, them pronouns, and I'm so excited to share a little bit with you. I'll forefront my presentation by throwing some good contact info in the chat. Certainly I can't cover everything that makes Reed such a um, unique and exciting learning environment. So you're more than welcome to reach out to our general email address, join our mailing list, or my favorite email, writer Reedy, goes 
to all any current student in our office. Um, I saw a fantastic question from a parent in the chat thinking about math and how that can prepare a student for success. That would be another great option to direct to our current students. So when I think about Reed, we are a small liberal arts college located in the city of Portland, Oregon. We have about 1500 students and it's an entirely undergraduate school allowing us to put um, all of our resources to the success, innovation and creativity for our students for those first four years. I'm also really appreciative of our location in the city of Portland. Um, it opens up opportunities. We are just 15 minutes away from downtown Portland by public transit, 15 minutes north from Reed, and you'll get to some really exciting shopping streets. Students are always exploring on the weekends, going to cafes, thrift stores, record stores. I've had some of the best Vietnamese food of my life in Portland. So there's always something new to check out, and it's really a vibrant and exciting city life. Reed is also a liberal arts college, and we take that idea quite traditionally to mean a little bit of everything. We want to develop well-rounded critical thinkers, students who are, you know, a physics major and a French minor and playing in the Reed Orchestra. Um, Reed is an institution that allows students to discover for themselves what they're passionate about and how they want to pursue those academic interests. Um, when we think about liberal arts, we want people to have that flexibility. So you can take classes across the sciences, humanities and social sciences um, with that goal to bring together research and to learn something new. To get into the numbers, we have an average class size of 17. Our classes are capped at 24 students for conferences, and we have a nine to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, we put a big emphasis on those small learning environments. Every class is taught by a professor. And frankly, I would say professors are really the crown jewel of the academic experience. They are some of the most passionate, smart, creative folks, and they come to read because they know what students can accomplish at that undergrad level. It's quite common for folks to do research over the summer or during the school year working with professors, and in fact research is a hallmark of the read experience. If you come here as a student, you are guaranteed to do a senior thesis project. It's a year long opportunity to dive deeply into a topic of interest to yourself. Um, it kind of is just an open sandbox to explore and create something new. One of my favorite um, theses just this last year actually in math and CS was from a student who was really interested in the iridescence and how to program different like colors changing from, like purple to green on a computer screen. So she made this beautiful digital replication of a hummingbird to practice her iridescence coding. Um, another student in our studio art project created these beautiful stoneware. She hosted dinners for immigrants and the children of immigrants to have a conversation about that shared experience. So if you're thinking about performance or studio art for the thesis. You are a creative director on your own project. Um, it's just one way that we give Reed students a lot of resources to develop, hone their areas of interest, and then go run, go run off with it and create something new for the school. I find that's what really unites our students here. It's a passion for learning and a desire to share it with others. Um, because of our intense academic uh, environment where students are often finding that area of academic passion. Reed is ranked between the third and fourth highest producer of PhDs. So our uh, faculty, they know really well how to, you know, provide students opportunities for research, mentorship. In our sciences, there's a big emphasis on grant writing. So you're not just going to the lab and, you know, doing the experiment, but you're actually learning how to create a compelling story for why you should receive funding and how to, you know, present and integrate your findings into the standing scientific literature. When I think about science, Right, that can often be overlooked at a liberal arts school. So I do want to emphasize that if you're passionate about the natural sciences, computational sciences, um, there's certainly a place for you within a liberal arts environment because you're also developing those strong communication skills. So that's a little bit about our academic environment. We have that passion for research that everybody accomplishes in their final year with the senior thesis. Reed is also a fun school, a quirky school. We're a school, like you've heard my colleagues at other institutions say, where if there isn't a club, you can start your own. A couple of my favorite clubs include Cheese Club. Uh, they have 40 different types of cheeses to eat. There's Bread Club. Maybe they could have a party together. Um, we have student groups around playing a billiards pool 
um, doing fire spinning, um, participating in aerial dance. Um, so there's a lot of folks interested. I like to say that you really can't have a boring conversation with a Reed student. You're probably just not asking the right questions because you'll find everybody has their own niche interests that they are overjoyed to share with others around them. So if that sounds exciting and like a community that you could see yourself a part of, certainly, right, there's much more to explore on our website and through joining our mail list. Um, I want to highlight if it when it comes to applying, Reed has no application fee, have it for a long time. We are also test blind. We take a holistic review of students' applications. And when it comes to financial aid, we have uh, we meet 100% of folks demonstrated need. Last year, our average financial aid package was about $55,000. So certainly, you know, get in touch with us, see what uh, this experience might look like for you. But yes, thanks so much for letting you share a little bit about Reed. Please don't hesitate to get in touch. And we'd love to see you if you're ever here in Portland. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions throughout the rest of the week. And you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash launch. Um, have a good rest of your evening and good night, everyone. Bye.